games, uh, in particular Cover Orange, Blueprint 3D, Clear Vision. Most recently, they've been producing a game called Banana Kong, which was released on 24th and hit the number one paid app in 36 countries within just a couple of days. So rather than talking to me, you know, listening to me, I'm going to pass you straight over to Philip. Thank you very much. Thanks, Oscar. So the um, topic today is uh, staying unique at the age of clones. Um, we'll take a look at what's cloning all about. So what is hiding behind the bad C word? Well, we all know these two. The left one is a clone. Well, you can decide for yourself if, if it's a good clone or a bad clone, but he's definitely unique, and that's what it's all about. So actually, there's a Wikipedia article about video game clones. And it says, a video game clone is either a video game or a series which is very similar to or heavily inspired by a previous popular game or series. The, the term is sometimes derogatory, implying a lack of originality. However, clones can be anything from a pure ripoff to a legitimate derivative or improvement on the original or even the homage. So, what the fuck? Then almost all games are clones? Well, it's a difficult question. The answer is yes or no. So um, let's start with a short overview of video game and cloning history, especially. So cloning is almost as old as the video game history itself. The first video games came out in probably in 1947, and um, took a couple of years until it was really popular, and it started with Pong, which is actually the first clone. Uh, Nolan Bushnell started a couple of years before Pong came out, and thought it was a good idea, and they put it into, into a console. So, um, clones can also lead to new genres, just as with the Doom clones we had in the 90s. It started with Doom, obviously, which is basically a clone as well. And um, it comes all the way until Modern Warfare 4. It's just evolution. After Doom, there was Doom 2, then there was Quake, and Unreal, and lots of games. And every time there was little improvements to the initial thought and idea of the game, and that's where it brought us today. And um, also clones can be much more successful than the original idea. This applies to Minecraft. Minecraft isn't an original game as such. It was based on Infinity Miner. And Notch saw this game in 2009 and saw that it was a nice idea. And um, yeah, the game was discontinued in 2009. And then he thought, OK, I'll, take, I'll pick up this saw and make a game out of it. And well, the rest is history. Basically, there are four types of clones. Uh, the first one, I'd call it ripoff. That's all game cover orange, which was very successful, around 11 million downloads. And um, ripoffs always come with legal problems and copyright infringements. So this, for example, is taken from Google Play this week. It's, um, we, we don't have cover orange on Google Play now. So what they did is they ripped all the things from uh, the App Store and put it on Google Play. No idea if it's a real game, if it's a fake app, whatever it is, it's a legal ripoff and we'll get it removed. And um, yeah. Also, ripoff, it's very ugly from the same company actually. Um, they just changed the assets and, well, basically it's the same. Um, to the left, you have Cover on or Original, and to the right, Cover Cherry or something like this. And, um, well, low quality ripoffs like this or clones, or whatever, will never pay off because people know what they're looking for. And if it's not what they expect, they give you one star ratings, they will start a shitstorm or whatever. And um, so, if you start cloning, just do it right, the right way. The thing type is what they call a style clone. Um, probably the first game on Doodle Style was Doodle Jump, which is very successful and popular. Um, yeah, <laughs> a short time after Doodle Jump came out, we did Parachute Panic, which was very successful as well. And since it was a very, the Doodle style was a very popular um, style, we decided to give it a try with the style as well. And uh, the gameplay here is inspired by a very, very old uh, Game & Watch game by Nintendo, but still with lots of improvements. And um, then just a, another random clone from the App Store, Doodle Carbon. All three share the same style, but not the same gameplay. <clears throat> same for the block style that's very popular right now. Minecraft really kicked it off. And Ace of Spades has recently been announced. I don't know if it's out yet, but 
that girls in the same art style, um, probably they will be successful already, only for this reason, because they're using the same art style. The third type is um, a gameplay clone. <clears throat> I wouldn't say that Jetpack Drawbit is really a clone of Cannibal, of course, but it's an endless runner. It's the same base mechanics. You run as long as you can and as far as you can. And the last type is, I didn't find a better name. It's, I'd call it pseudo game clones. It's um, a game that tries to be another game, but still is unique in some way. And these games mostly come on platforms where the original IP is not present. For example, Modern Warfare is not on iOS or on Android. And um, Gamelot fills this, the, um, the spot with Modern Combat 4. So why you shouldn't clone excessively? <clears throat> First of all, as I already mentioned, there are legal issues, like Super Mario Bros. versus Diana Sister, which is a very popular example from the 1980s. Crazy Taxi versus The Simpsons Road Rash, which did also uh, huge news back in the 90s. And a current example is uh, the, the fight between EA and Zynga with uh, some social and the will. I have no idea how they settled, but probably they'll settle out of court or whatever. So take care if you clone, because probably these guys will have the better lawyers than you. So, <clears throat> sorry. Um, if there is a successful game, you won't probably be the only one who will clone this game. So either you're really fast or you will face a very, very big competition. So you will need something that makes you really stick out of the mess. Well, besides being not original, uh, you're not original at all if you really clone one on one. And um, if you would all clone games without, some, without adding something new, well, our customers will get tired of games and stop playing. And actually, that's not what we want. Also, we're working as publisher, and we're getting pitched lots of games every week, and there's so many clones, like really one-on-one -on -one clones from people who are really skilled with nice graphics, good, very well programmed, but we don't need the 10,000 Angry Birds clone or Cut the Rope clone or whatever. So if you want to get your game published, think of it, what you will do, and what's your USP. And also a nice example from last year, two years ago, maybe you remember it. Um, Zynga cloned um, Tiny Tower from Nimblebit. And uh, Nimblebit did this reaction, it was a very nice move. And uh, So if you don't care, well, you can clone, but if you care a little bit about what people say about your company, well, probably they will laugh about you in this way. So actually, why do people clone? <clears throat> As already said, if, you, if you're quick, you can ride the wave of success of the original game. Was, like this was Fruit Ninja, which, which got a clone very fast. It's Waggy Samurai. It went uh, number one paid in at least 30 countries on the App Store. So they did a good money, and I didn't see anything new in the game compared to Fruit Ninja. And the current example is, uh, what's the word? It's a quiz game where you have four pictures and you have to guess the word that they all have in common. And Fear Builder and What is a, it's a local clone, actually. It's um, really targeted at the German-speaking market. And um, since What's the Word is apparently only available in, in English, for Fear Builder One and What is doing much, much, much better in Germany than the original game. <clears throat> so you can have quick success if the original IP doesn't cover localizations, for example. So another reason why people tend to clone is that customers always tend to go to something that they already know in some way. So if they know a character, they will go for similar characters. If they know a gameplay, they will go for similar gameplay. Also, as already mentioned, um, if a game is not available in a the system, there will definitely be somebody coming and fill the spot, with, like with Modern Combat 4 or many other games. <clears throat> um, the same applies to markets your app isn't localized for, as I just mentioned. And um, also a very big risk 
and that's why people clone us. If you're ahead of your time, and the time ahead of the time of your game, you will most likely run into a financial disaster. And there are many examples of games that have been out there, very cool games, but they didn't work well and the market didn't really accept them. Um, so people do something that customers know, and it's easy money, but actually nobody will remember the games. I, I don't know how many people here remember Reggie Samurai, but probably everybody knows Fruit Ninja. And well, it's also hard to find new ideas, so everything has already been there, and uh, it's also a reason why people tend to clone. Um, if it's done in the right way, cloning is more like referencing or getting inspiration from other games as well. And of course, as bad as it sounds, cloning is essential to video games, as clones lead to new genres as well. Here are two great examples of unique games that I really, really love. And for example, XCOM Enemy Unknown was a game from the 90s, and it got a remake last year, and it was so great. Actually, what they did, they mixed two genres that were already out there. They mixed a base management with some um, tactical turn-based fighting, and it works great. It works great. Each component for itself is nothing new, but the combination is really new and or was really new in the 90s and really worked well. And then you have The Room, which was uh, app of the year last year on the App Store. Great game. If you didn't play it, go ahead and play it. It's actually like a trick box, and you have to get inside the box to unlock the secret, and there are lots of tiny mechanisms and stuff like this. Well, of course, there are trick boxes already and made of wood or whatever, and as physical goods, but it wasn't there before as a digital game. So if you know like a, a physical game that hasn't been there, that hasn't been imported to digital, go ahead and do it. You may have a winner. So um, let's take a look at uh, some games our partners did. First of all, Cover Orange. Cover Orange basically was a totally new idea. There wasn't a game comparable to it before. Um, when the team started developing Cover Orange, they said, I want to make a game where I have to save something. They didn't know what, they didn't know how, so they started prototyping, and they had an orange ball and a plane that uh, threw bombs. And, well, actually, you had to shelter this orange ball. And they get, when they had the prototype ready, they gave it to people to play, and suddenly a girl said, wow, what a nice orange. And that's when it made click in the heads of the team. So, okay, we will add a character that's nice and lovely. And we will also change the airplane to another character, which was a cloud. And then they added all the little animations, and eventually it really worked well, and it paid off, and the game has much, much personality. Another example is Blueprint 3D, which was pretty successful as well. It was app of the week um, the beginning of this year. And basically, <clears throat> it was um, based on Starlight, which was released before Blueprint as a Flash game. And what you had to do here is you move stars until they eventually form into a shape. It was just a 2D projection and uh, very rudimentary. And um, when Kasi was finished with this game, in Flash, he wanted to do a new game. It's the same idea, but using 3D projection and real objects. Well, unfortunately, during the development, he noticed that there's another game actually doing almost the same thing. It's coin of vantage. He didn't knew about it. He just came across it accidentally. So that's something that can happen as well. You start developing a game and think you're unique or have something totally new, but you forget to do the research, and suddenly you, a game that's exactly the same or almost the same comes out or is already there and you find it. So at this point, that's a new challenge. You have to make sure that the game is different in some ways if you want to be successful. For Blueprint, this was a big challenge because it's a rudimentary gameplay. You just turn a 3D model until the, the scattered pieces form an object. So what is very important here is just like uh, Michael said right now, um, in the lecture before is the production value needs to be very high and the game needs to be polished and the experience needs to be enjoyable. 
let's have a short look at how we create games. So first, we have an idea that comes in any situation, like daily situation, taking a shower, toilet, or whatever. And, or it's a, it's a thought that we think we need a game on a specific genre, like endless runner, first person shooter, whatever. No matter how we start, we always end up brainstorming in a team and brainstorming, brainstorming, lots of people and thinking of ideas, what we can do, taking looks at other games in the genre, what's similar, what hasn't been there, is there something we can take from other genres to make something totally new? And we start prototyping, tweaking, prototyping, giving the prototype to play to people and see what they say. And well, it's one of the most things is keep your USP in focus. Never forget where you want to go, what's the, really the thing that makes your game pop out from all the other games. Because if you lose it, you're screwed. Um, for Banana Kong, for example, yes, uh, it's obviously the game is inspired by Donkey Kong and Sonic the Hedgehog, Jetpack Joyride, Ski Safari, and uh, a couple of other games, but it's no real clone of itself that we really made a one-on-one -on -one clone from something. We um, had an idea and started prototyping and thinking and well, about for about six months, we were only discussing what we could do, what the game could be like, and so on. And also, reason why, also reason why we choose um, to take Kong, or Banana Kong, as a character, is because said people tend to go for something that they know or familiar with. And um, well, Donkey Kong is a very popular IP, and apes or monkeys and bananas in video games. You can't copyright them, uh, and the character still looks different, and it's a totally different atmosphere, but somehow it's, yeah, we have a setting that, where people feel comfortable. And that's also one of the reasons why people love the game, and the game was successful. Um, and the character is actually a homage to Donkey Kong. <clears throat> and for example, in Banana Kong, we have new gameplay features we didn't find in other endless runners. You can Actually, you can glide for when you jump and you stay pressed with the finger and then you glide, which enables new gameplay elements. Um, you can also, there are different platforms and you can jump on the platforms and jump down by swiping. And for the whole time of the game, actually there are three parallel locations running parallel. And um, you can switch between the locations with certain gameplay elements like wines and lions and cave entries. So, how to stay unique? Let's take a quick look at what you shouldn't do. I hope that's obviously don't steal assets or other IPs, because legal issues and all the stuff. Don't try to imitate another game. You have to stay unique in some way, with a key gameplay feature or whatever. And don't miss the right time, because otherwise the money will be gone and someone else will make the money. <coughs> Um, so what should you do? First of all, play lots of games. If that's your living room, well, then you know many games and probably know what to do. You have to do research, <clears throat> brainstorm, a lot of brainstorming and ID finding. Find your USP and what really makes your game unique. Mix genres if you don't find a really uh, outstanding feature Go ahead, mix genres, create new gaming experience like XCOM did. And if you're absolutely out on using something from another game you're in love with, well, do it like we did with Parachute Panic. We contacted uh, Igor from Lima Sky, and uh, he was very uh, happy about the cooperation. We put the doodle in Parachute Panic in return. He did cross promotion for us and was very successful for us. So. Think of how you can work with other developers, especially indie developers are always open for corporations. Um, that's probably the approach that Notch took. He found a, a, a raw jam, found the flaws in the game, added something new, and he had a winner. So that's it. Thanks, and uh, be creative.
Right, Philip, that's great. Um, I think what's really important that you're highlighting is that there's a balance between familiarity and originality that we've got to find in any game. And that sense of emotional comfort that we give a player when they first encounter our gaming experience is just as important as the ongoing pleasure they get from the surprise that they find from what's new in the game. So hopefully that me talking has given you a few seconds to think about questions. So anyone got a question for Philip? We have a question down here. Uh, is there a microphone? We need the microphone so that uh, the recording can get your uh, question on it. So uh, hopefully we can get you in the mic. Hi. Uh, how much time do you spend on finding the game title? I reckon especially uh, when searching through the App Store, it's helpful if uh, a part of the title is already known as for Doodle Jump, the word Doodle, or Kong, as you mentioned. Um, it's difficult to find the title that does not really is a ripoff, as you said. Well, it's, that's a really big challenge, and it gets harder and harder. Like four years ago, when we started on the App Store, it was pretty easy to find a name that's not already taken by another app. But nowadays, we, we try to find a name for all of the production time, and maybe two weeks before the submission, we, we decide on the final name, and it's, it's really difficult. It's one of the biggest challenges, because the name needs to be catchy, Maybe some reference, uh, like Banana Kong, but there's King Kong as well, so probably King Kong was an inspiration for Donkey Kong already. And Kong is actually just another word for a monkey. And uh, yeah, it's one of the biggest challenges. And it's also, I think, interesting because the importance of that instant familiarity, the, 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 when you're dealing with an app store, you've got such little time to convince the player that this thing is the one thing I want to try. And therefore, getting those intuitive names no. is so critical to success. That's, for example, with Waggy Samurai, you have Waggy yeah. and Samurai, and the original game was uh, Fruit and Ninja. And it's not the same name, but you immediately create um, a relationship between both. So uh, in fact, the name I, is well I remember back in the day, there was a game called Pub Pool, which if you kind of understand the, you know, the idea that a pub pool game, you know it's going to be set in a pub, where people drink and it's going to be a game of pool. I mean, it's so obvious. But that game itself became a brand in the old Java days mm. simply by being so blatantly obvious. Any more questions? Any more for anyone? So that uh, looks like we're out of questions. So thank you very much. I thought that was really thank good. You. And I think that we should take these lessons to heart. You know, the fact that we have to own up that we're borrowing, we're standing on the shoulders of giants every time we make a game is really important. And then we find, need to find that balance between creativity and originality, as well as familiarity. Thank you very much, Philip. Thank you.